What's going on, everybody? I'm Victor Cruz, and I got a call from my man Odell Beckham Jr. He said he wanted to sit down and have a conversation. We're gonna talk about everything, COVID-19, Black Lives Matter, and everything under the sun. We got two of his counterparts, Cam Newton, Todd Gurley. I'm excited to talk to these guys, so let's go inside and check it out. All right, guys, so we're here. Um, I'm excited about having this conversation when Odell called me, and I know when Odell wants to talk and gets a group of guys together, um, I know it's gonna be real, and it's gonna be real talk, and it's gonna be real conversation. So obviously we got Odell Beckham Jr. here, Todd Gurley, and Cam Newton. So just to get right into it, I wanna get you guys' thoughts on, obviously, the pandemic, COVID-19, uh, just your thoughts on, you know, being on lockdown, what are your thoughts around that, being home, having some time to self-reflect, and then furthermore, what does that mean in terms of how, how comfortable are you going back to play in the NFL, given the certain circumstances of the way the world is in right now? For me, it was a time of really self-reflection. And I was, you know, being isolated with, with your people, the ones you love, wherever you live with, um, and just training and really just trying to, you know, dig down deep finances within myself. Playing football is taking a backseat as far as my safety and my health. Um, you know, this is not something I'm not trying to, catch COVID and spread to my family and my loved ones. So I've kind of just, um, you know, relaxed with the idea that I might not be playing this year. There may not be a season there. Um, there are other issues at hand that we have to handle first. Um, and, you know, however that goes, we'll, we'll figure out soon. I feel like for us to come back and play, like it needs to be a plan. Like, you know, you see the NBA, you know, those guys has a plan. And then kind of just going back what O was saying, just like, Seeing those other leagues stop, the MLB, NHL, like NBA, you kind of already getting your mind prepped for not to have a season. Yeah. So um, start saving money, you know, especially for the young guys. Just start doing the right thing and start dabbing into other things, you know, start trying to work on your craft outside of football. Cause that was the thing for me, right? I was like, during this lockdown, like, if you don't come out of this with a new trade Got to. or like something that you didn't know about yourself that you can work on and hone in on right now during this time, then you, ha you have done yourself a disservice. You know what I'm saying? You have nothing but time. It's tough, man, because real people are being affected in a negative way. And I think the first time in our lifetime, there's probably something where we don't know what the fix is. And I think that's the issue. It's an invisible monster. And, you know, my personal story, you know, I was affected professionally, personally, and, you know, in ways that obviously me being a free agent for as long as, as, as I was, it was because of Corona. I couldn't travel, I couldn't go to teams. It was a lot of uncertainty. You know, when you do go places, when you do go to the grocery store, the market, when you see your kids, you know, you know, my sons and my daughters, like they, they, they looking at you as like, daddy, when you going to Charlotte, you going to work, you gonna play football in Charlotte? It's like, no, but you wanna be able to tell them something, but you, you're not able to travel, you know what I'm saying? And I think for us, it, it it puts our human hat back on. And because when you, I have friends who have been, um, you know, has, has contracted in essence the virus or the sickness or the, you know, has been involved. We all know somebody. And then when you hear the numbers, you know, spike in a way that, that, that you know, in the last couple of days or even weeks, uh, we we want to live this this normal life again, but like it's invisible. You don't know if it's here. You don't know if I got it. You don't know if you got it. You know you don't know if the cameraman got it. And I think that's the scariest thing. And you know, for us, our sport, you pass DNA off. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, it, that's the one thing that I'm that that kind of worries me about the NFL specifically, right? Because they're talking about at least things that I've heard at least early on wiping the pads down after each uh, you know, drill and having these tests, ha checking temperatures every day. But I'm just like, how does that prevent anything? What if you don't wipe that one pad down the right way and there's right. still some COVID? Like, how do you, and especially guys in the trenches, right? You're a running back, T. Like, you're in the trenches in between them tackles. Them D-line, O-line, they're banging heads, trading sweat, 
every play. Uh, every so, like, how do you prevent something like that? Or how do you, not even preventing it, it's more so how do you make the players feel good and, and safe, that's the word, safe about going back to play during this time? Yeah, I think it's just tough because, you know, let's say somebody fumbled this seven, eight people on the ground, we're all piled up, you know what I mean? Like, there's no way for us to not play the most physical sport on earth and, and be close and have contact. One thing that in, in my years of going into the league and college and just learning and growing, um, I feel like America fears the unknown, right? If we don't know who Cam is, like, we have to label him. Like, we have to say he is, oh, he's this guy, and he's shown it in this kind of way. There's a flying saucer in there, oh, it's a UFO. We don't really know what that is, but we have to, to make us feel comfortable, we have to label that. We have to label you. I'm the bad guy. We have to, da, 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 da. you know what I mean? Like, that's, that's, that's what, a, that's, that's what, a, that's what America does, you know? So with the, with the COVID, whether it, it's realness or not, it's a fear of the unknown. They don't have the answers. Yeah. And, and that's the problem with me is you don't have the answers. You're, you're going off of these scientists and these guests and all these things when it's our lives at risk. You're not about to give us no extra money. You know, you're not, there, there's so many things that are going into it. Uh, so it's just tough, you, you know, like when, when you really don't know something and it's this invisible boogeyman, this, this coronavirus, you, you know, like I said, I felt like at first, it was kind of like, you know, I don't even want to get into it, it's election year. There's so much other stuff that's going on, right? And coronavirus, cool, it could distract us from everything that's going on, right? But then it actually spread and it's big and it's major. And, and now we're in a place where people are really being affected. Economy is being affected. People are dying, numbers are spiking. And the shit's real, yeah. you know? And there's no, there's no way around it now. The shit is real, it's in our face. Yeah. Yet, they're trying to make football happen. And, and to me, it's kind of, with, with everything that's going on, what does that say about our country that this is that important, that this is that important, that this needs to start up when there's no plan for us, there's no nothing? I think, I think it's two things, because you said a lot and a lot of factual statements. But number one, it does two things. It could either blind people from the truth, or it could be a Band-Aid for something. Because one thing about rather than any other, I, I think the Super Bowl should be a holiday, might as well. Just the reaction that you get from people, the the camaraderie that you get from no, people. And, and the biggest thing is that people watch that game all over the world. People that Real don't time. even know what football Real is, time. be like, Yo, I saw you in the Super Bowl, and you're like, you live in India. Like, how do you, you know what I'm saying? Correct, but at the same time, you also have to know our sport <laughs> dabbles in more, more DNA spread, probably, I think another sport probably would be what boxing, UFC, yeah, maybe, rugby, maybe. Probably, yeah. you know what I'm saying. But you know, with basketball, you know, the uniforms make sure that you can have a constant. You know, when you come off, you can go as extreme to say, "Well, we got to change your whole uniform." No, this goes. Uh, uh, Dwayne Wade used to change his entire uniform at halftime of every single game. Mm -hmm. He'd get a whole new jersey. Every, I mean, obviously, he wasn't thinking about pandemic right. things like that that was just something he his routine yeah. but nba has the option to yo you want a brand new whole jersey mm -hmm. but i have time done you know what i'm saying yeah so to transition a little bit um i was excited to get y'all three here because i wanted to get y'all take on the black lives matter movement yeah. yeah and i think initially just talking about you know how it affects you because i was definitely affected by it and it and it was later on because obviously you know racism exists we all knew it exists mm -hmm. well before black lives matter but I think seeing our people dying in the streets and seeing our people, you know, being brutalized by the police really just affected me in a crazy way. And I broke down. Like after George Floyd, like a week into that, I broke down and was really like, why? I couldn't understand why. So I was excited to get I was excited to get y'all's take on it and just to see where y'all at mentally and then transitioning to where do you think the NFL, what do you think the NFL needs to do in order to keep that the topic of conversation even though we're playing football again? You know what I'm saying? We gotta apply pressure as players. Like, you know, just the whole situation. Enough is enough. But it's time for us to, to make sure these high power organizations are, are, are doing something for a cause. You know, whatever it is. Like, I feel like, especially African Americans, whatever, football, basketball, baseball, like, we have the platform, the opportunity, and they don't have a choice but to give us that right now because 
a lot of they things. Owe it to us. A lot of things have been getting exposed, and I, and and I even go back to where I'm from. Like me being from Atlanta, Georgia, by way of College Park, the only time I seen a, a Caucasian person was in, in a position of power, mm -hmm. the police officer, the teacher, the principal. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like I went to a predominantly all black school and I knew black all the way up into college until I went to a division one school like now. But you make like you're in question now is like, well, we don't have no articulate coaches that know the game of football that's black. We don't got no rich dudes that can own a team that's yeah. black. You know what I'm saying? And it's like, okay, now how much of this have been, like people have been getting boycotted or black, you know, black ball behind the scenes to avoid that happening. And I think the things that, that makes this so impactful is it's exposing a lot. And that's all we wanted. Yeah. You can't hide no more. Yeah. Even even the little slick sneak this and that, you know, a lot of players may have said, a lot of people may have said, like the Karens are coming out you know, more than ever now. 100%. It's, it's just like. 100%. And it's, 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 it's almost to say like, you know, we just want our just do and like the right. It, you, you shouldn't go off of like, okay, how he look. You know what I'm saying? Because I do believe in, in 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 this premise. Just like love, hatred, racism, sexism, any type of grouping of any type of sort, it's taught. I got I, I'm responsible for seven children, right? So it's my job as their parent to in, instill in them like if he's your friend, he's your friend, no matter what he looks like. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? If this is your, if, if 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 he's your elder, if he's black, white, Indian, Hispanic, it's you show his yes sir, no sir. You know what I'm saying? But at some point in our lives, something tricks, and it's just like, hmm, no, I don't mess with you. You know, say look how you look. You know what I'm saying? I think it's from the upbringing though, and that's what I was yes. saying about as far as your morals. That's what I meant by the the love and the hatred, like. A good person is raised to be a good person, so I know to open the door for the elderly woman or male. No matter what, no matter what they are like, it's, these people don't have the right morals. They weren't taught it. It was instilled in them to hate. It was instilled in them to. And see. you know what it is? It's the conversations that they have in the car that they're yeah. comfortable and the kids are in the back seat, they think they're occupied, but yeah. you having those free conversations in the front seat, and your kids I, listening to everything. I think the biggest thing too, cause like, like you said, we're from the South, so racism is, that's every day there. Every right? day. But when you exactly. see stuff like, stuff in Minnesota happening, you're like, damn, this stuff happening in, you know, up North for places yeah, you wouldn't even, you wouldn't even, yeah, like you wouldn't yeah. even expect this type right. of stuff. So it's just like, it's all around. I want to come back to you real quick on, on the, on the kids, on the children's tip. Cause I remember I was in the room with my, with my daughter and we're watching the George Floyd thing happening, the protest, like right at the height of it. And I'm looking at her and I'm like, I haven't had this conversation with you yet. Mm -hmm. And we're watching this whole thing take place, and I'm like, I gotta have this conversation. And we had the conversation from slavery all the way up with like pulling things up on Google, reading material, like we had the conversation. Yeah. And she's eight years old, yeah. and you have seven kids. So like, how do you tackle that either when you've had that conversation or when you plan on having it as they get older? I'll tell you one thing, man. Children are not, they, they like sponges. They not dumb. You, you think they oblivious to, you know, so y'all stay out of grown folk business. Like, they hearing in the other room, like, you know, mommy is mad at daddy. Daddy is mad at mommy. Like, something's going on. Man, my daughter came home one time. And this was when she was enrolled into a an elite, prestigious uh, private school in Atlanta. And she came home. She was 12 at the time. She said, Daddy, I'm being taught black history by a white person. I said, whoa. I said, okay, keep keep talking. He was like, well, you know, we're talking about slavery, but we didn't really talk about slavery. We mentioned Abraham Lincoln and, you know, how he, in essence, was the president to free the slaves, but it wasn't in depth. You know, we talked about certain issues, but it was more or less highlighting, you know, it, it was like, Okay, you know, you know, you watch that movie where it's like, what's in this room right here? Yeah, don't worry about this room, yeah, exactly. but let's keep going on down yeah, here. Yeah. It's, you know, because if you really want to tap into it, you have her due diligence as, 
not only black and white, but all people to understand where this country has came from yep. 400, 500 years off the backs of, of people of color, you know what I'm saying, to really understand. And I think when people understand why people are angry, and I think for me, you know, seeing CNN, NBC, you know, ABC just rampantly talk about black killings. Yeah. It's like you ain't never seen no white person or a, 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 a person of privilege, you know, be confronted in this type of situation. And when when you do have a situation where uh, a Trayvon Martin happens and then you see the results of it happen it makes people angry because all right in our in our lane you know and i'm not going to go into depth of who i know and how i know them but we do have close people that's in our lives that may not make the right decisions of how they make money right but when they get kind of caught up in the, the the web of okay you get banged up now you got a court date and you get slammed with to 25 years and you got a pedophile who who take five years and did, yeah, you know what I'm saying? Free, it's like, yeah. hold on, what, 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 what's really going on? Exactly. Like, like we, like, we, like, okay, the only reason why he was forced to do that, and I'm not, listen to me when I tell you, I'm not saying do bad or illegal things, but I am saying when you have a, when you're a convicted felon, off of uh, in, in, in our society as black men, people getting felony charges on their record for the rest of their lives at the age of 15. Yep. They don't even know themselves yet. And that goes back to like guys that are incarcerated right now for marijuana yeah. and, and things like that. Like marijuana is the whole business. one step away from legal. Throwing, you know what I'm saying? They throw, you know, and they throw you know the thing that pisses me off is like when these killings do happen, they the privileged people want to go back. Well, he he had a record. He did. It doesn't matter. Oh, he he should have never. He should have right. never been. That's he should have never been kill killed. Yeah. And that's what makes you. That's what makes you angry because okay, let's just call it what it is. If what they did, if you take the badge off, if you take the gun off of his, if you take everything off that doesn't say he's a police officer and you put him in civilian clothes, and he's a regular person, mm -hmm. and he does what he does, that's murder. Yep. Well, that's, that was the biggest thing about Trayvon Martin. That's what like really hit home for everyone. It was just like... The kid ain't do nothing, man. He wasn't even a police officer. That really, hit, that really hit home for everyone. Exactly. Obviously, the three of you are, obviously, everyone knows who you guys are. You guys have had tremendous success in the NFL. And I'm, I don't know if you guys have even thought this far yet or leading up to going back into your respective teams, new teams for two of you. Is there a plan in place that you guys have set to put pressure on not just the NFL, but on your teams to pay attention to police brutality, to pay attention to Black Lives Matter movement? Like, what are, what are you guys thinking about that you can do individually to keep pressure on the teams to say, hey, this is still a thing? You know what I'm saying? I think for me, first off, like I'm going into a whole nother situation yep. where I don't know. And it's so much that, you know, I feel like you walking into, you know, the new school with all these books. I'm just going to take one sheet out. My biggest issue in America right now is inequality. Yep. Mm -hmm. Like if the if if you're if you're right for this job, you need to get that job. If you're right for this position, you need to get that position. No matter what. No, no matter, matter what race. I don't care. I don't care what it is. You 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 are owed that as as a human. You know what I'm saying? And I think that's the part that makes me angry because you got people who have to provide for their families. And yeah, police brutality is is a absurd, disgusting, distasteful issue that just happens and people just kind of turn their head and it's people that still haven't recognized the issue of police brutality. But at the same time, for me, it hit home for me where I was like, bro, it's inequality, mm -hmm. you know, and especially in our sport, you see the 32 teams. Okay, we probably, well, we got five, five coaches that are- uh, Head coaches that are black? That, that, that may not be black, but mm -hmm. have some type of ethnicity. Yeah. And it's not even that. It's okay. What about other other roles of influence? What about OCs? 
What about defensive coordinator? Well, that's the biggest thing is that, okay, there aren't any uh, or as many black head coaches. The ratio of black to white head coaches is extremely lopsided. But it's because a lot of the black co black coaches aren't getting the OC jobs and DC jobs, which lead to head coaching jobs. We know that how many teams we've been a part of, that we've seen the OC, even the quarterbacks coach. Most of the black coaches are running backs, you know, receivers. Yes. Yo, right. I never forget my third year in the league. I asked my receiver coach, I was like, yo, why is every running back coach in the league black? And he was like, I think you answered your own question. I was like, yep, I'm gonna keep on going. Yeah. I think the three of you are in like this, completely unique circumstances, but still with something to prove, right? You're coming off a year which obviously wasn't your best year to your standards, and coming off injury, surgery, Todd going to a new team after facing some injury and wanting to prove yourself again, Cam obviously proving, wanting to prove yourself again in, in New England. Um, and I wanna kinda talk about your mindsets. Like, what's your mindset going into this year? How are you thinking about this year? What are you, you know, obviously I see y'all working out, y'all are doing your thing, y'all are focused. Like what's your mental, what's your mental like going into this year despite, you know, COVID-19? If the league is happening and y'all suiting up, what's the mental like going into this year? I'm not even gonna lie, I haven't worked out this much in, in my life. Mm -hmm. I mean, it literally haven't been nothing to do but to work out. Why do you think, why do you think you've been going this hard? Um, like you said, just keep the main thing the main thing, but then also focus on another craft. And for me, it's just like going to a new team. You know how it is. We're, going, yeah. we're both going to a new team. I'm going to Atlanta. Like, the yeah, it's like Black Hollywood for me. So I'm like, <laughs> I'm excited about the whole thing. And it's like, it's at the end of the day, it's football. Like, you have you had conversations with Matty Ice? Has he reached out to you to have a conversation? Just I've thrown with him okay. once. He reached out to me once. But you know, the main person I've been hanging around has been Julio. I mean, right. that's the, you know, that's the yeah. bread and the butter of that team. You know, that's the, the, the head honcho. He's been there. Y and what have those conversations been like? Really just growing as a person, me being 25. Um, and my mind, have not even really been on football. It's been on like doing shit off the field, whether it's just going to Atlanta, helping out the community there. It's, you know, how that, how that goes. It's the only right. So I saw you in the street you like, you gotta, you gotta do everything. So it's like, I'm excited. Like football, I don't, care about football because that shit gonna take care of itself. Mm -hmm. I've been balling my whole life. So exactly. it's like, that's what I do. Yeah. Like long as I be consistent and put in the work every day, then I, I know what's gonna happen on that field. Injuries, you can't prevent those. Of that course. shit can happen anytime. But long as you know you put that work in, like it's cool. And I got Julio, like I'm straight. <laughs> like, I'm good. <laughs> um, I wanna get to O because obviously I've seen you since your rookie year, right? Yeah. And I know what you came through. I know what you went through, both on and off the field. Um, so I'm excited for you for this year because you're coming into a leadership role. You've been, I mean, you've been in a leadership role, but you understand the league now. You know what I'm saying? Nothing is a surprise for you. You understand everything that's going on business side as well as playing the game. So what's your mindset going into this season in terms of just being yourself again and feeling like the old that goes out there, and, oh, the blonde is back. The blonde is back. Yeah. This is how I feel. Like I'm, I'm, I'm tired of playing your game. You know, like me and Cam talk about that humble shit. That when you, when you are inside, like we're humble men. Like but, you know, but there's also this to us. That's how we got here. But they've taken that humbleness as a weakness, and they and they shit on us. Yeah. You know, and it's just crazy to me because when when you're up and you're talking, they hate it. Yeah. You know, um, and for me this year. I'm trying to kill. Yeah. Like that's it. I want an opportunity to catch the ball. I want to. I want the same opportunities that all these other receivers have in the league, where they're getting 2,000 targets, and ending up with 150 catches. You know what I mean? Like I want to be in a position where I can succeed because the football is not the same as basketball. You can get dunked on, right? I catch this. I'm coming down two times. And I'm slamming. I done stole it from mine and stepped back. I hit a three. Like it's it's me at the end of the day. Football is so much more of a team sport. It got to be a team sport. It really is. But once, but once, you know, for me, there was years where I was putting the numbers up. All they wanted to do was talk about the bullshit under the rug. Then the the year where I get hurt and I still have a thousand yards. Each year I still have a thousand yards. They want to talk about how you're not the same player and da 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 da. So like I understand the game now. And that's why you see the blind back. There's nothing you could tell me. Like, uh, Y'all watched Last Dance, right? Y'all seen the yeah, MJ yeah, die. Yeah, yeah. The part that got me was when this man, Dennis Rodman, 
decided to go to Las Vegas. These men are competing for another chip for a a three P. I fell in love with Dennis Rodman, and I was just like, "But look, I understand what you're saying, but nobody see that behind the scene, Dennis Rodman. You can see that go to Vegas, but when that motherfucker probably showed up to practice, okay. his ass okay. was on. Okay, you know what I'm okay. saying? Okay, don't don't mention that he went to Vegas without mentioning the next scene when Phil Jackson had them running the laps and, and who was leading. Them. Yes, exactly. exactly. You see what I'm saying? So, and we all know we got that one dude on our team is like, bro, he, you smell the liquor it's seeping through his pores, so but it's, time, it's go time. When you want to hoot with the dogs, you better yeah, soar with the eagles. Exactly. And I think, like, I, I want to say something before this opportunity passed. I, I just, I've had a bird's eye view kind of with both of these dudes and they ain't need, like, I'm a, I'm of a, observer you know what I'm saying I'm, I've been peeping them I never probably went public with it but I'm, I'm saying it right now I heard how T like this ain't the first time TG done said but I ain't never worked out this much yeah. and I'm like what yeah. you know what I'm saying I, every 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 day I see this dude you know what I'm saying I've been coming to LA LA the A LA the A LA the A and every time I go in there I see TG either doing therapy, something. And I'm like, bro, you ain't been doing none of this? You know what I'm saying? So I'm eager to see, you know what I'm saying, what you do, you know what I mean? Because from afar, I think from the football narrative, we all of this macho, yeah, alpha yeah. male dudes that it's like, bro, why we can't all get along? You know what I'm saying? We all like each other, you know what I'm saying? But we would never kind of admit it. I'm fans of so many people in the league. I'm a student of the game, so I always watch other people's games just to kind of peep. Like shit, like what kind of celebration are we gonna do this time? You know what I'm saying? Like, what well, what TG gonna do? You know what I'm saying? Like, what Julio and not everybody else gonna do? And I'm and I'm like, I'm working out with him, and I'm seeing him. I'm like, bro, okay, you feel me? And then obviously with O, like I've known him, but I seen something. We was working out not too long ago, and I was and I was seeing this side that it was just like, bro, he 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 believing in like. Himself, you know what I'm saying? Like, bro, like. Pro Bowl O. I was like, man, oh, I saw that video. No, I said, all oh, Pro O. All Pro O. All me. Pro O. And I'm like, bro, like, like, it's it's kind of like that that scene in, in Lion King, right? When Simba looking in that ward, I'm like, bro, do you not know who you are, bro? Like, you got a roar, bro. And then again, with that is like when that roar that I have was. Not different than anybody else, but for some reason, to me, it felt different because it was me who was personally being attacked. So that roar that I have and, and being the person that I was, it was like it was too much for people. So I was trying to tone it down. But but stop right there, bro. Like, you got to understand. You got a responsibility. You got to understand who you are and what you represent. Like, you are, you are the Dennis Rodman mixed with the MJ. You feel me? In, in in a millennial time where everybody looking, running to their phone to see like what O wearing. Like you've done things that a lot of people only can dream of doing. Mm -hmm. You feel me? All off of, you know, I reached back like one three. You did ever since that point there, you was you was a superhuman. Mm -hmm. And I see you, I throw to you like regular on a regular basis for the last two weeks, and I'm like, bro, like, man, this man. Like what? What the I mean, it's just normal. He just it's, it's just like, bro, I'm like, yeah. look at this. You know what I'm saying? Like, don't and, and I wish we would have had a relationship sooner because I'm like, bro, don't change. Cause what is that go what, what what's that gonna get you? That's what hurt me so bad because like I know who I am to these mm -hmm. kids. Like when I broke my ankle, bro, there was really a point when I had seen I said I said this in college, I said I fear the day that they make this game of business and not what I love. And when I, when I seen that for the first time, after breaking my ankle, like I thought about like not playing no more. Like this is not really it for me because they've ruined the game of football for me a little bit. But then when I be on the sideline and that little kid is do the whip dance, mm -hmm. like that oh, shit is what fuel, that's what okay. fuel me. And that's what make me now like, hopefully they give me some more time because I'm, I'm coming back from serious injuries. Like I'm trying to get fully healthy because I'm trying I'm but, trying to kill. But that's you though, bro. Like I literally today, like, and this ain't no like like we say, there ain't no cap. Man, I done seen this dude, bro. First off, he texted me. We were supposed to work out at three. He said, bro, I'm gonna work out at 3 30. He said, bro, my leg's killing me. Dog, I'm 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 sore. But yet when he get out there, it's like and I'm like, oh, bro, just do top end stuff, bro. Like I want to protect you, dog, because I want to throw again. 
at some particular point later on in the week. Exactly. He was like, uh, receiver stuff, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> Only quarterbacks can relate. <laughs> ah, I'm all right. Oh, okay, let me start off with a snap. Boom, we run a snap. Ah, catch. He said, all right, you know, and then we was working out with, 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 with Harry. Yeah. He was like, what are you running? I said, you running a dig. I said, bro, if you ain't got to run a dig, you run a type in. He said, no, nah, I'm going to run it. Boom, we run it. Boom, bop. Then he started looking at it. He went even, you know, I already just stood up peeping his things when he know when he knows somebody looking at him. That's yeah. when he kind of charged up. Yeah. So I'm like, okay, cool, boom. So now we really get into the rhythm of things. And I'm like, bro, he feeding off of the energy, the energy. of people. You can't teach that. And then not only that, so I, I'm on a number count. So I was like, okay, I'm gonna throw 50. Oh, come out there, I'm gonna throw 65. Okay, he now he wanna say, all right, bro, I wanna, I wanna go deep. Okay, 65 turning this 72, 75. So I hit 75, I'm like, bro, okay, I'm dumb, okay, cool. Well, old dude, he don't take his shoelaces off. He go all the way down on the other field where UCLA working out and I see him coaching up. Like he has this kinetic personality, bro, that like they, they, they wanna hate you for that. But I'm like, bro, this dude genuine, dog. Like, you know, I done been around TG, you know what I'm saying? I've seen him work and I see him, how he take people up on his wing and, and he's just like, that's who he is. And for our sport, we always get jaded because we are mass athletes. Yeah. We don't, they you know what I'm saying? We don't have the luxury of, of basketball players walking down the court and dunking and slamming. But for the people who do, and that's the people that are sitting at this table, you know, we have a due diligence. It's, it's, and I heard Nipsey said, God rest his soul. He was like, would you rather would you rather, you know, go out your way to make somebody else happy and you not happy? Or would you rather be happy internally and pick and tick everybody else off? Yeah. And I'm like, bro, oh bro, you a dog, bro. Don't ever let them take that that roar away from you, bro. Like that's you. You know what I'm saying? I wouldn't know any other way. I don't I don't had the luxury of playing against him. And now this all season kind of getting to know the person, seeing his family, seeing his mom and his pops, and just seeing how he moved. Like he's just that dude. You know what I'm saying? Like everybody draws to him. And it's like you can look at it, it's like, bro, you go on Instagram, like the dude got 14 plus million, you know what I'm saying? That's it comes with a responsibility, bro. Yeah, you know and I saying? think that's what was so hard for me because that that you talking about, you know, you, I don't have no kids, mm -hmm. you know. If I did, I, I'm making sure my little one's straight. I don't care nothing about nothing. But I feel that God's purpose for me was so much bigger than myself. Mm -hmm. So when they took my authenticity and fucked me over with it, right. I couldn't deal with that because, like, even even media questions or something, like I could sit up here like, you, oh, you know, I'm just I'm just here to play football. Like, and and that's where I feel my mind going. Mm -hmm. Cause when I, cause when I give you, you know, well, um, and I'm giving you real insight. Yet I'm seeing the articles and you shitting on me. Cause they taking they, out the little blurb. It make me not want want to be that. So I ran into bigger problems with the fucking world than than myself. And then I struggled to deal with that. You know, depression, mental health issues, being in New York, not really liking it because I'm on a t like I can't we. You know, we beat the shit out of y'all all the time. Like, we wasn't losing. Yeah. We wasn't, we didn't lose. To lose a game, bro, we cr I cried that night. Yeah. Like, to lose one game, it was, it, our season's done. So when I first got to the league, that was major adjustment for me, six and 10, six and 10. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. we, I wasn't never on no good team. I couldn't deal with that. Yeah. So you see the outlash on the field because I'm competitive. Mm -hmm. Talk about Cam a little bit more, obviously. And I can speak for these two guys that understand that you got some war within you too. And you got some passion, some fire, and some fight within you too. And I'm excited to see what you bring to the Patriots and, and how, you know, you're able to kind of bring your personality and bring what you do to the game yeah. under the New England Patriot way. I'm, I'm, I'm completely honest. I'm excited to see it. What was your feelings and your thoughts, A, when you got the call, and then B, as you started the process? Yeah, slow sip. As you start the process of thinking, wow, I'm about to be a Patriot. We're being honest. First of, of all, I'm going to say they don't believe in you, Cam. We talked about it. They well, don't believe in you. Uh, that's real talk. But, but, but this, is, this, is, this is me. But I'm going to just keep it 100 with you. It was it, my, uh, my dog, Future. Shout out to Future. He dropped a mixtape called 56 Nights. Mm -hmm. One of my favorite mixtapes. And I was like, bro, like they playing with me. And I had to count the days how long I was... Unemployed, mm -hmm. it was 86 nights. 86 nights, like it's just like that, that's two to that's three months. Yeah, almost 90 days. You see what I'm saying? 
and I'm going through it and I'm like, okay, early on, like people going to get signed that I'm looking at and I'm like, you can't say I'm old because people older than me getting signed. Especially at your position. Hello. You know, <laughs> then I'm like, you can't say it's about injury because people who are injured, more injured than me are getting signed. So I'm like, okay, cool. Like, whoa, whoa, like, whoa, where we at? Then you can't say the talent. So I'm like, hold on. Okay, now I'll be the first person to tell you these last two years, I haven't been putting the best film on tape. Mm -hmm. That's, what I do with you. that's just honest. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, I'm like, okay, there's other people that's been putting shitty film out there that's getting picked up. And I'm like, whoa. Okay, not no, even picked no. up. They got the starting job. You know what I'm saying? Like I'm, like I'm feeling disrespected. Like I'm feeling like, bro, because every team at one point had to say, okay, fellas, Cam Newton. What do we think? Uh, pass. You feel me? And that's the disrespect that I feel. Mm -hmm. So it's not like I'm, 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 I feel vindicated to some degree, mm -hmm. but I'm searching for, I'm like, I'm aiming at, I'm going at next all year because it's like, I, at, at one point I did feel, and I still do feel like, a part of me is left because I gave an uh, organization everything. Mm -hmm. What I gave, I don't think other people were willing to give. And it was times where I, sh I knew I wasn't supposed to be playing. Mm -hmm. But off of the mere fact of Luke Keekley, Thomas Davis, you. you know what I'm saying? Like uh, DJ Moore, uh, uh, Christian McCaffrey, D'Angelo Williams, Jonathan Stewart. Yeah. You know, Steve Smith, I'm like, bro, I can't give up on them. Like, you know what I'm saying? We play uh, the ultimate team sport in offensive football. That's the ultimate team sport. Because if the guard don't do his job, I can't do my job. Who, who, who is O? You know what I'm saying? Who is a tie girly if the guard don't do If the center don't snap the ball, if O don't block on the perimeter, how can TG eat? That's the ultimate team. We need a collective group of 11 people doing one thing, not one guy trying to do 11 things. So I said all that to say, I'm like, bro, like, I, I – Man, I got a call and my agent hit me. I was, you know, no cap. I was working out and he was like, hey man, you know, we just got an interest from a team. I'm like, okay, cool, who? And he was like, New England. I said, <laughs> I said, hold on. Like, how's, how is me and Belichick gonna mesh? You know what I'm saying? And, and Cause that was the first thing I thought. Cause it's like perception. Like, but I like, think his perception of Belichick is not that. Like, for, for me, first of all, I went to LSU, you was at Auburn. I watched you, I watched you do what you do, right? right? And then you get to the league, and I'm thinking I'm the one dancing, I'm having fun, and then I see you out there and what you brought to the game and to the table. So I understand, like, I feel like now that I've gotten to, to link with you this offseason, I just have so much more respect, a better understanding, a better appreciation of what you've been through. Because, you know, like, like you, you're giving everything. Shoulder, foot. Everything. I came back three weeks early and broke my shit. Everything. I should not have been playing. Mm -hmm. So for me, watching you and now to, to feel that vindication and to be going to Belichick, there is no, like, how is it going to work? For me, all he want to do is put you in a place to succeed. Yeah. And I'm happy to see it. But yeah. but it also it's like this too. It's like okay, like can we can we not? We have to talk about the elephant in the room. And it's like, you know, you who you you coming after? Yeah. And I'm like, yeah, great. Yeah. What he was, what he is, is great. Needs no even talking about it. But one thing about it though, you. <laughs> Coach McDaniels, you you able to to call some stuff that you ain't never been able to call now. Mm -hmm. All right, you, you know, and I told, hey, you getting a dog? <laughs> you get, I'm, and you ain't you ain't you getting one of these ticked off dogs yeah. too? That's like, bro. Angry. And I'm looking at the schedule. I'm like, days. who we play? That team passed on me. Okay, that team passed on me. They could have game and got me. They hollered at me. I even asked my agents like, hey, yo, so what's up with? Nah, man, the agent act like he was like, well, we got to wait to it was just all type of, you know, issues. So I'm like, bro, you know what? I'm going I'm going to take this time with the COVID. I said, I'm going to commit to yeah. myself. You but talk saying? about one thing that affected me a lot, especially obviously going through the injuries that we've all faced at this table is the mental aspect. Mm -hmm. 
because not just mentally getting back and recovering from the injury, but mentally being like, okay, I'm back, but does my GM feel like I'm back? Mm. Does my coaches feel like I'm back mm. so they can keep calling these same plays for me mm. like they used to? Like, and then when that doesn't happen, how do I find, how do I become myself through that? Yeah. How do I yeah, stay I really tied nah, early that, through that? That was no, the biggest see. thing for me, like, last year. And that's why I'm so just happy and proud of myself because the way I handle everything, the whole situation, it's like, you got to control what you can control at the end of the day. And for me, I'm, I'm probably like the opposite of y'all. I'm just more just like cool, calm, collected. But that's you on know. camera though. But like, yeah, no, yeah, I, I, yeah, like that's me. But like, I'm more just like, I know what it is. It is what it is. Like, it's like, man. You don't I'm really saying. have to tell me something for me to know it. It's just right. like, all right, vibe, I, I get the vibe, I get the... But at the end of the day, you're not going to bash... You can't bash my name because I'm a good person. Man. I'm a great That's fucking a teammate. Thing, but it's like, bro, what can't you do? You catch naturally. You can... You you shifty. You power. You, you can between the tackles and I'm Man. Sorry. I started this shit for the running back. Yeah. Yeah. I started this barbecue <laughs> business. I'm a king around here. <laughs> <laughs> But nah, I see, but I just I, I like the young I like the young fellas to eat too, man. I sit mm-hmm. behind the scenes like, cause it's it's a time and place for everything. Yeah, and you gotta important. appreciate you gotta appreciate the youth that come under you. But yeah. but at the end of the day, I know what you know what you can do. You know yeah. what Cam can do. You know what O can do. But like, but I don't, to your I don't point, really have to, answer. to your point, bro, it's like that's a dark feeling. Cause for, dark feeling, yeah, I mean, especially cause being the you go from being the man, right, and then you're in the meeting bro. rooms like. I ain't in none of these plays. Like I ain't in no nothing highlighted for me to take advantage of this cover too. Uh-huh. Like nothing. But before though, before I was before, like, hold on. Oh, the, the delays are like it's right here. Like, 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 like right here. Like, oh, we good. But, but mine was but mine was different though. Okay, I get hurt. Okay, then they gave me the option. You know, I had, I remember it like it was yesterday. I meet with uh, Marty Herney, which is the GM, and Ron Rivera, the head coach, and it was like. We gonna go off of what you want. If you want to take a time off, we gonna let you take a time. I said, you know what was best for me? I'm gonna take a time off. Okay, now I walk into the facilities, man. We wish you, you know, we can't wait till you get back. Da 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 da. That's week. That's that's the first week. That's this, kind of the second week. Okay, they start winning, and I walk in. Like I went from being a priority in the training room. It's like, hold on, hey. Move your ass out of the way. Cam, come here, right here. Boom, we're going. So now I'm walking in the facility and I'm like, okay, cool. But, hey, my foot. And it's like, hold on, hold on real quick. I'm like, hold on. Then they, you know, a quarterback having success. And 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 to be honest with you, it's 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 messing with him because I'm like, bro, don't let me yeah. throw you off. Yeah. When? Because I was thinking the whole time I was going to be able to, I, I wanted to go on IR to be able to get time. To get fully right. Fully right and then come back and make a playoff push. Yeah. But I downplayed the, the severity of the, it, the injury. Okay. And now the question is, it's like, okay, I, got, I, I was having a lot of personal baggage with me. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And I see how people looking i see the conversations that's being had you know i got my little foot soldiers my dogs that say like hey bro i ain't gonna ain't gonna lie to you bro like it's bad bro like they 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 really shitting on your name like and i'm like bro like for me i'm a loving dude like if i would never look at odell and be like if i was a receiver and he got it he got eight catches for 98 or 112 and I'm another receiver and I got one catch for six yards and we win, oh man, look, we turning up. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? That's a, like, I'm a winner. Yeah. You feel me? If I'm a, if, 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 if TG the running back and I'm a running back and I'm supposed to be the third down spell and TG feeling it and he waved me off like, nah, bro, it's third down. Look, t- so what? I just want to win. You feel me? So I'm seeing a situation where it's like for me, like I'm like, bro, like y'all forgetting about me? Like, so in my situation, I'm seeing a quarterback <coughs> take a team to the Super Bowl and win it, and he still ain't the guy. And I see a, a quarterback that goes five and zero, oh, and he still ain't the guy. And I'm seeing my situation, and I'm like, what's so hard about y'all just to say, bro, this is our guy? You feel me? I was in that same situation. I feel like in New York, like I didn't buy a house because 
after my second year in after our game, I'm thinking I'm going to be traded, 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 traded. And the talks was there, yet you not really confirming, shutting it down, denying it to the media, no nothing. So for somebody like you, who I understand, like, if I lead a game, no touchdowns, barely any, whatever, but we catch a dub, of course, I'm going to be hard on me. Mm-hmm. But like I'm still out with y'all. Like we good. Like we, we won. We yeah, won. One step closer. But they don't understand that. So for me, you know, I think about the Saints situation. Teddy, you talking about Teddy, right? Drew, you. The only situation different was the Eagles. But I mean, look at the situation if you really look at it. But those situations, like if you had to rank them, it would be Philly first, Saints second, my situation third. But why were they so easy to commit when the third situation, it shouldn't have been hard. But I, just getting my intuition and my discernment of the whole situation, I was like, not saying at all is speaking so loud. You know what I'm saying? And I was like, bro, I, 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 I seized the plot. You know what I'm saying? So when it happened, I was like, bro, when they sent, they, it's like they sent the text like, yeah. That's the part that's hard though, because now you walking around the building a little different, and you when wait, wait, wait. they sent a the text. It. They sent you a text. Bro. Nobody called me. My agent called me, bro, and that's why I was. Like, wait, I was like, bro, it was a text sent, and then I was like, what? And then he called me. Was like, man, yeah, man. I told them don't just do that. Like we gonna have to agree to what team you gonna be traded to. Mm-hmm. I said, this whole time. The owner couldn't call me. No. The GM couldn't call he, but but they called me That's after right. the fact. Basically they called me, you know what I'm saying, with the with 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 the the decision already made. Yeah. You know, it was in the book. Yeah. And then it's like, okay, you know, and I'm talking to them, I'm like, bro, like you you I'ma be professional. You know what I'm saying? I'm gonna I answer the phone call, yes sir, no sir. That's how my mom raised me. Mm-hmm. But in the back of my mind, I'm like, bro, y'all got some nerve, bro. Like, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a warrior, bro. You know what I'm saying? I take everything at heart. I, I'm, I'm the type of dude that get off the bus mad. I, man, shoot, it's raining outside. Oh, y'all tried me. Mm-hmm. So let alone, I done gave this whole city, I gave this whole franchise, I gave the coaches everything, my mind, my body, my soul, my heart, and this how y'all treat me, bro. And I said it in the interview before, I never once wanted to leave. Y'all pushed me out because y'all didn't believe in me. You know what I'm saying? Because, like, they was like, he's not healthy yet? No, nah, get rid of him. I'm like, okay, cool. So now I'm going to another situation where it's like, I get coached by arguably the best coach ever. Swear. Arguably. You but know what I'm saying? Yeah. And now it's like, if we was playing spades, it was like, bro, you know, we all had this. Bro, you give me your hand and, and, and you get my hand and let's see what you would do with it. Exactly. That's the thing. Ooh. Yeah. So um, that was a great conversation. Happy we had that. Uh, so I got two more questions before we get out of here. I want to circle back on one. And, and I asked um, before about when you go back to your respective teams, what are you guys doing individually to make sure that you're holding teams accountable about the black community and Black Lives Matter and how, and, and specifically how they can help you individually get the word across and continue to put the pressure on these teams? TG, I'll start with you. Um, to be honest, I haven't really even thought of that. Yeah. You know, I've always been that person. I want to do stuff on my own, but. Why not put, like I said earlier, why not go because to the team? Because teams and, got yeah, resources, exactly. they got PR teams. So, yeah, they so got it, it definitely makes, it makes sense. Like I yeah. said, I need to go back to the drawing board myself and be like, hey, y'all need to do this. Y'all need to do that because especially a lot of these whatever companies, NFL, they say they care, but like, yeah, it's cool to throw a check, but like get your ass out there and actually do something too because we've been doing shit for our for community since we've been in the league, you know what I'm saying? People have been doing shit for our community f- since way back in the day. So it's just like, I need to take that consideration to, to go back, yeah. make a plan, 
and, and put that pressure on them. And it's bigger than just like, I feel like a lot of teams, they do the, you know, they come film the summer camps in the summertime yeah. and be in your community for play a little 60, bit, like, play 60. Oh, and play then it's like, all right, we did it. We out the way. You yeah, know what I'm saying? I feel like it would be the same here. But yet at the same time, they do put all this emphasis into other communities and be behind it and do all that. I feel like with this movement, you know, even the message about Black Lives Matter, let's say at the end of the day, like this is what I was trying to say. It's a lot of us in the NFL. We make up the NFL. Yeah. So you have to say that. And we can that's do shit together too. You have to say that. Exactly. For me. That's why I love the video that all y'all put out there and like yeah. got in front of it. That forced the NFL's hand to come out and say something. And that's what I'm saying. Without that video, I don't think it would be said. But like, let's, and I don't even know if this is a good example. Starbucks talking about they firing the people who got the Black Lives Matter, da da da. Yet they retract and, and retrace and come back and like, oh no, Black Lives Matter, this Lives Matter, da 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 da. You know why? Because there's some black people who going to Starbucks and making up your business. A lot of people. Like, a lot. Whether, whether consumer or employee. But let's get this. What What is the black national anthem? I think that's, but but they like, did say they They gonna play that for the first week. Yeah, like, is but, that gonna, that's like, that's but, not enough. You know what I'm saying? That's not it's even not like, you shouldn't even start it with that. You gotta start with something bigger than that. Between that, between the silence on a lot of these owners still, to this day, a lot of these yeah. owners still ain't come out and said to nothing yet. Day. To this day, yeah, for real. And honestly, I bet they ain't putting that BLM on the field. No, nope. spray paint that on the field. Right? I promise you, they logos. Ain't. Yeah, but it's it's you know, more black gloves. Let's like, everybody wear black gloves. But like it needs to be initiatives. Yeah, initiatives right? You know what I'm saying? And I yes. think I think the biggest thing for me, man, even if the initiative part. Is, is 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 still not is uncertain still i think there's a disconnect with the compassion to understand why people are angry yeah. but the thing is right given what colin kaepernick did right taking a knee years ago you know a few years back and could you imagine having a black lives matter initiative the same way there's breast cancer the same way there's salute to service i think he would have could you imagine the nfl it? having a salute to service initiative and a black lives matter initiative I don't see that happening anytime soon, but it's gonna take people like us and everybody here to force. We can't, we can't be afraid to come up with a plan and pitch that shit. But why cause, not though? Cause, cause I, I remember very vividly, I think it was on a Monday night game and you had an interview with the uh, Latino. It was like the, the Latin. Yep, Spanish, whatever, the, yep. Yeah, that. Spanish outlet. And I'm like, so we cater to so many different other things, but we kind of overlook one of those, like going back to the analogy, like, man, what's in this door? No, close that door. Let's talk about this door right here. Yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like we have issues that we are facing every single day. And even with me, like, People look at me and they're like, Cam, why you why you growing your hair out? Cam, like, why you doing what you like? Why you dress the way you dress? Like, Cam, why you act the way you act? I'm like, bro, like, it's for it's to empower uniqueness. Like, we all got money, you know what I'm saying? But at the same time, we all are blessed and and and, and have a platform to be able to empower people. And the only thing that I want to do is motivate people to just be yourself, bro. You know what I'm saying? Like, be you. Like, it like. W w what you do ain't gonna harm me. I want to get to know, like, bro, like, what's going on, dude? You, learn you know what I'm saying? Like, like one of my partners that both of them know, like Ray. Different. You'll see Ray, and it's just like, bro, whoa, who is this weirdo dude? But I'm like, bro, one thing about him, you're not gonna meet a more genuine person. He means no harm, and he gonna make you better. You feel me? And it's just like, it, it's something as simple as, come on, oh, you know you got two more when you, oh, yeah. come on, Kim, like, come on. No, nah, bro, chosen relying on you, bro. You know, it's just like, whoa, okay. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? That's and why you gotta have great people around you. That's too, real though. talk. You gotta have great that's people around. That's real talk. So um, lastly, I wanna ask a final question. And obviously all of us are players that love playing the game, love our fans, love people that uplift us. But obviously, going into this season, there might not be any fans. Like, how do y'all feel about potentially playing with no fans? Like, how how would y'all be able to get up for games? Because I know, oh, I know we, you know, have many conversations about the fans and how we play for them. You know what I'm saying? We play for the people that look for us, that that look up to us, and that want to be us. And you know, so how do you feel about playing without fans? Yeah, for me, so so for me, it's not so much that I play for the fan. I didn't. 
I didn't bust my ass, give up on three other sports I could have played professionally. Professionally, I didn't, I didn't, I didn't do it all just for the fans. Now, in in essence, when I go out there, that's the extra motivation. Like I say, it's that little kid. Yeah. It's not the grown man. Like I don't, I don't, you know, no disrespect, but I'm not really here for the opinion of man. Like that's just not me. Mm-hmm. You know, I got is on my neck. I am who I am. Like that's all. That's all I will ever be, and, and nothing more. So. To a degree, I do play for them. You know, I remember when I was a little kid Mm -hmm. and I looked to the Mike Vicks, the the Allen Iversons, the Randy Mosses, you know, for some reason, all of them might have been a little troublemaker, but that's just, that's what it was. But the media painted them. Exactly. But I remember the the motivation I had and how nervous I was to meet Mike and how, you know, like Mm -hmm. that. And that fuels me as a kid. That's why I make them feel comfortable. Like, yo, like, Helmet yeah. off, talk to me. Yeah. Like, what's yeah. up? This ain't nothing. This I'm not. You know, we we looked at it as superheroes and all this, but like I'm human. Like I'm right here with you. Like me and you are very much big kids. Like we we love it. We thrive off of that. So for me, it's gonna be hard playing with no fans. I'm gonna be honest with you. But I, I don't know what it holds for me. I'm gonna be honest. I don't know. We we've known all our life to have fans, but like when I go work out, like. I'm, I'm sure when the game going, yeah, but I, when I work, somebody lining up talking shit. Yeah, but it's cool. But I work out. I work out every day with no fans, so it's like my it's mind. Different, yeah. It's different when you lining up and your game jersey on and you running out that tunnel and you like. But it's a it's a unfortunate but it's a unfortunate it's an unfortunate situation that you just have to come to an agreement with yourself and just understand like it's what it is and you just kind of just gotta like. But I'm go eager. I ain't gonna sit up here and lie because. Yeah, we all talked about, you know, investing in or, you know, a different uh, kind of feel. And I think the players are going to have so much control. You know what I'm saying? Like here, I'm a person who I have a production company and it's like I've always been for the people who follow me. I always want to show a side of me that I'm not able to show with my helmet on. You know what I'm saying? They see the dad side, they see the fashion side, they see the kid-like personality, they see the the philanthropic side giving back. You know what I'm saying? And I think now, you know, more than ever, you're really gonna be able to show that on a wide scale. It's like, okay, nah, like, y'all show, this is how I prepare. Okay, even though it ain't no fans there, but now it gives my production team that power to say, bro, we gonna shoot you all the way leading up until you call in the play. Yep. You know what I'm saying? Right. Just to show a side that like, bro, I wanna bring everybody into, because truth be told, bro, the people who are most impacted from what you do, they not in that stadium. You see what I'm saying? Like, let that sizzle in your spirit. Like, the people that are most impact, impacted of what a Todd Gurley do, they in North Carolina somewhere, and they may not even have the money or the funds to ever see you at UGA to play at Sanford Stadium. You know what I'm saying? They may not have seen Odell or Ellis shoot. They doggone sure that wasn't able to fly to New York to, to see you, but your impact still reigns supreme. People who follow us it may be just with social media, you know what I'm saying? So it's it's like for me, like I'm excited because it's like I know what people want to see. They want to see the raw, the real, the 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 something that they can kind of relate to and be like, oh, oh, they all chew gum. What type of gum be? I chew the same type of gum. Or I remember watching an article where Michael Vick, he had the chapstick. It was a strawberry chapstick, and I was like, man, mom. I need all the strawberry chaps. You know, just, it's weird, but people do that. You know what I'm saying? Like, I, I look at my son, bro, and he's like, Dad, I want some cleeps. He called them cleeps. I said, I want some cleeps, just like you, Dad, white. And then he, when I wear the black ones and he got the white ones on, he run back in the house just to change his black cleeps. And it's just like, bro, like, we all have a responsibility, and it's going to give the athlete more power, especially the football athlete. Like the LeBrons of the world, the Kyrie's of the world, the KD's and the Steph's of the world, they don't have an issue with that because they they see it. Yeah. But now you're able to show a side of yourself that's the humanistic side. Mm-hmm. That's like, oh, Odell is a real dude. You know what I'm saying? Like, even though he has a superior talent that I may not ever be able to do, 
he's still relatable. Yeah. TG is super relatable. I didn't even know he even talked or he even cared about these type of, you know, topics. You know, but now I do know, and that's what I'm most excited about because it's going to challenge everybody to be creative in different ways, from the owners to the stadium quality control to now, like, how are we going to make our money back? But it's yeah. like, for me, it's like, bro, how can I... Sh- take this opportunity to show a side that people want to see, but ain't been able to see because I'm not going to give no teams, no, that, that, that type of content, you know what I'm saying? It's like, no, bro. Like, you know what I mean? I just want to smoke cigars, talk shit, drink vino, you know what I'm saying? And be around, you know, people that know me, you know what I'm saying? But now you give them that opportunity, like, okay, this is the preparation of week one, you know what I'm saying? And now it's like, okay. Yeah. It's a whole different vibe. All right, my brothers. Well, this is a phenomenal conversation, man. I'm, I'm actually excited I got to sit down and have this conversation with you all. Um, oh, I appreciate you for putting this together. Mm-hmm. And um, if I could say one thing to encourage y'all moving forward is I remember J. Cole said, black people haven't been in this position before, mm-hmm. where people understand us. They can't turn the blind eye. They can't say they don't know. They're unaware. But we got to have a plan. Mm-hmm. So I encourage all of us, myself included, as black men of power in positions of power, you know, within our own right, within our communities, within our families, to have a plan and, and, and have that plan and execute that plan to the best of our abilities. And us four in this room could lean on each other. You know what I'm saying? Me in the media space, you guys are athletes. Like, however we can help each other to push the narrative in a positive way, let's do that, man. And, and uh, let's, t- let's just have a cheers to us being alive out and out being out here out of eye. Gotta do that. Gotta do that. Cheers. You already know. Appreciate y'all boys, man.